So I'm here just a uh, final morning at the Cube uh, at Stockholm World Water Week 2011 with John. John Matthews, nice to see you again, John. Could you, could you hold your badge up for a second? Sure. Great. So, so I'm, talk, talk away. Let me know what you're thinking about at the moment. Uh, so I'm John Matthews. I'm with Conservation International. And uh, in, just in the last few months is a project that I've been working on in Rwanda, of all places, that uh, has actually been really inspiring to me. In 2004, there was a, a moment uh, where there was a, a, a mild drought in Rwanda, and it was in a part of the country where there were two hydropower facilities that generated 90% of the electricity in Rwanda. And this mild drought, actually, it threatened uh, the electrical uh, supply for the whole country, very briefly. And uh, as a result, uh, the policymakers in the country, the, the electorate, really came together and they realized that, that, uh, that climate change was a huge threat for them. Um, and they realized that they had been mismanaging the wetlands in the country, uh, that they had put all of their energy uh, eggs into a single, uh, well, at least two hydropower baskets. And uh, they hadn't been thinking uh, about, uh, about how climate change was actually going to interfere with the long-term development of the, the country over this century. And they've done incredible things over the last eight years. Uh, they have, have done a, a massive uh, uh, reassessment of all of the, the water resources in the country. They've said we need to redistribute our energy grid. We need to make sure that we've adjusted the land tenure system. We've started to restore wetlands. They've started to work with Ramsar and other groups. And they've uh, said, you know, agriculture and energy and, uh, and, and food and cities, it's all really connected around the theme of water. And it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful story of actually some of the most progressive thinking in the world in one of the countries that has really kind of come back from one of the darkest periods of the last century. Great. Um, you also mentioned something about changes going on on high-level stuff. Uh, absolutely. So there's a, there's a group that I help lead uh, with Diego Rodriguez at the World Bank, and it's called AGWA, A-G-W-A, the Alliance for Global Water Adaptation. And it's a... It's a really. Is this you mentioned this in Cape Town? Yeah, it? that's right. We we were just having an organizational meeting there, mm. and uh, we've kind of taken things to the next level. It's uh, this is World Water Week in 2011, obviously, and it's uh, it actually marks the first birthday of Agua, and Agua is a is a group of development banks. It's it's uh, people in uh, development agencies. Uh, it includes the UN. It's a uh, non-governmental organizations in the environment and professional organizations, it's uh, development NGOs as well, um, even very uh, kind of technical and corporate private sector groups. And so it's a very diverse uh, association of organizations. And what is it that unites us? I, I think part of it is uh, just a, a, a sense of both disconnection and fear about climate change that we uh, need to be able to find those isolated pieces of expertise and join them together into a kind of coherent story about how to actually do adaptation on the ground. And that's actually where the fear really becomes a kind of practical hope. And so we're starting to work in a lot of places. We're starting to work in Southern Africa. We're starting to perhaps work uh, in, in East Asia and the Maghreb. So uh, uh, working with lots of governments. Great. Well, good to see you again. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot, Mark.